Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope you're fine. Today we're going to uh, learn how to write a biography. Okay, so what is, what is a biography? A biography is a written account of the life of a person written by someone else. So it's the account of the life of someone who is famous written by someone else, okay? So today, we are going to, uh, to read about the biography of a famous person who is Ibn Battuta. I think you know this person. Uh, before we read, I want you to uh, have a look at the four questions that we have here. Number one, where was he born? Where was he born? Number two, how did he get the idea of traveling around the world? How did, have, how did he have this idea of traveling? Number three, what are the continents? Africa, Europe, Asia, etc. What are the continents that he visited? And finally, what is the name of the book that, tell, that uh, tells about his adventures? So where was he born? How did he get this idea of traveling? The continents he visited, and finally, the name of the book that, uh, it, that was written about Ibn Battuta. Let's go. So let's read together. Ibn Battuta is one of the greatest travelers in history. He was born on February 25th, 1304 in Tangier, Morocco. He spent his youth studying at an, uh, an, uh, at an Islamic school, learning, reading, writing, science, mathematics, and Islamic law. Have you got any answer here? He was born where? Very good, in, in Tangier, very good, in Morocco. Uh, let's continue. At the age of 21, he decided to make a pilgrimage, which is Hajj, okay? This word has been added to English, so people know Hajj in English now. Pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. He arrived after a year and a half after visiting many cities such as Tunis, Cairo, Damascus, and Jerusalem. He discovered that he loved to travel. He liked seeing new places, exploring different cultures, and meeting new people. So he decided to continue traveling. Okay? Any answer here about how he got this idea of traveling? Very good. He got it from going to Mecca. So on his way, he visited many cities. And there he got this idea of traveling because he likes visiting new people, uh, seeing new people and visiting different places. Next, he traveled the world for 29 years, 29 years. He first visited Iraq, Persia, then he headed, he moved to Africa where he visited countries as Somalia, Tanzania. Later, he went to Turkey, India, and then China. After a year there in China, he headed to Andalus, Andalusia, okay, Spain, and eventually he moved back to Africa to visit Mali. Okay, there is a question, question number three, about the continents he visited. How many continents and which are those continents? Uh, we have Iraq and China and Turkey, okay, China, that's Asia. Uh, we have uh, Somalia, that's which continent? Africa, very good. And finally, we have Spain, which is Europe. So there is no America here, there is no Australia, so only three continents. In 1354, he finally returned to Morocco. He told the story of his adventures to a scholar who wrote it down in a book called Rihla. He stayed in Morocco and worked as a judge until he died in 1369. Okay, so we have the last uh, question about the book. Very good, it's Rihla, let's see. So he was born in Tangier. Then he decided to make a pilgrimage and he discovered that he loved to travel and see people, etc. Then we have Iraq and Persia and then we have Africa 
and then we have Spain and the book is Rihla. Next, I want you now to match between the paragraphs, the four paragraphs that we have with the ideas they are talking about. Okay, so we have four paragraphs, one, two, three, and four. On the left side, we have the idea that the paragraph talks about his later life, his later life. B, countries he visited. C, the idea of traveling. And D, his early life. Early life means when he was a kid. So, the first paragraph, first paragraph, do you remember? You want to go back to the paragraph? First paragraph, he was born, Tangier, he spent his youth, very good, okay, that's his early, okay, so paragraph number one, it's his early life. Paragraph number two, in paragraph number two, we have decided to make pilgrimage, discovered that he loved traveling. So, is it his later life, countries he visited, or the idea of traveling? Very good. It's the idea of traveling. Paragraph number three, okay, where we have China and uh, Somalia and Spain. Yes, very good. That's the countries he visited. And finally, in the end, we have his later life. Okay, so what do we understand from here? We understand that in a biography, there is an order. We follow a chronological order. So as you see, first we talked about his early life. That's number one. Then we talked about the idea of traveling. So this, this idea started in the second paragraph. Then the outcome, the places he visited. And finally, his lay, how he ended his life and when he died, etc. So there is an order that we need to respect when we want to write about uh, a biography, or to write a biography. Let's go. Now, next task, uh, find in the text the words used to express the chronology of events. Because, as I said, there is a chronology, okay? And there are some words that are, that are used to express this chronology. Let's go. So this is the text. Can you try to find here the words used to talk about specific events and the sequencing of events, event after event after event. So if we look here, Ibn Battuta is one of the greatest travelers in history. He was born on February 25th. So that's the start. This is very important. He was born on February 25th, 1304 in Tangier. Uh, he spent his youth studying at an Islamic school, learning, reading, writing, science, mathematics, and Islamic law at the age of 21. So this is a, an important period. At the age of 21, he decided to make a pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. He arrived after a year. So after a year, it's important. And uh, Sorry, a year and a half after visiting many cities such as Tunis, Cairo, Damascus, and Jerusalem. He discovered that he loved to travel. He liked seeing new places, exploring different cultures, and meeting new people. So he decided to continue traveling. Fine. He traveled the world for 29 years, okay? Of course, 29 years is also important. That's the whole period. He first visited Iraq. He first, okay? So he first visited Iraq and Persia, then, then, so first, then he headed, he moved to Africa where he visited countries as Somalia and Tanzania. Later, later, okay, it's very important to move later, he went to Turkey, India, and then China. After a year, after a year there in China, he headed to Al-Andalus, which is in the past, that was uh, when Muslims were in the south of Europe. It was called Al-Andalus, Spain. And eventually, 
eventually he moved back to Africa to visit Mali. In 1354, in 1354, again another event, he finally returned to Morocco. He told the story of his adventures to a scholar who wrote it in a book called Rihla. He stayed in Morocco and worked as a judge, working as a judge because he studied Islamic law. That's why he was a judge. Until he died, so he was born, and then he died in 1369. Yeah, finally, 1354. So he died in 1369. So as you see, these are uh, the words used to express the chronology of events or sequencing of events. So on, born on February 25th, at the age of 21, after a year, first, then, after a year again, later, eventually, in 1354, finally, 1369, okay? Now, these are our expressions. On February, at the age, after a year, first, then, later, eventually. And finally, 1354, let's go. Okay, now we're going to read a, a paragraph, a biography about uh, Christopher Columbus, okay? And we are going to use the words we have seen before. We have a list here. We have finally, in 1451, later, first, at the age of 14, and in 1492. So the biography here is made up of three paragraphs, three short paragraphs, let's go. So Christopher Columbus was born, was born, here we need a date, we have two dates as you see, we have 1451 and 1492, which should be, which one should be the first one, 51 or 92, okay, so of course the first one was born in 1451 in the Republic of Genoa in Italy. Columbus learned to sail. To sail is to navigate and board the ship. So he learned to sail. Of course, if you remember with the Ibn Battuta, we saw that his early life, okay, as a child, we began with it. Now it's the same thing. We have at the age of 14. So it's the same, we're going to say, at the age of 14, Columbus learned to sail, okay? Let's move on. So, number three, he worked as a business agent, traveling around Europe to England, Ireland, and along the west coast of Africa, okay? We still have, finally, this is not the right one, because finally normally should be used in the end. We have later, we have first, and we have in 1492, okay? So, we can use first. First, he worked as a business agent, traveling around Europe to England, Ireland, and along the west coast of Africa. He, so after first, we can have later. So, he later became an educated man who read a lot on astronomy, science, and navigation. Paragraph number two, Columbus had a plan to sail across the Atlantic to reach Asia to profit from space trade. So Columbus had a plan to sail, okay, to Asia, but taking the way of the Atlantic, not through the Middle East, to profit from spice trade. Trade is business and spices are those that we use for cooking, spices like salt, pepper, he proposed his plan, or this plan, to the European leaders many times. So he suggested this idea to many European leaders, but it was rejected, okay? It was always rejected. So no one of the leaders accepted this plan. His idea, so after it has been, or it was rejected many times, his idea was accepted by the Spanish Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand who helped Columbus financially. So his idea was finally, finally accepted after it has been rejected many times. Now, finally, it was accepted, 
and they financed, they helped him with money to be able to travel to Asia through the Atlantic. But instead of going to Asia, he ended up in the Bahamas. Bahamas is in the South of America, South America today, okay? On October 12th. The last thing that we have here, last one, is 1492, uh, okay? So this is the biography here, okay? So we have in 1451, he was born. At the age of 14, he learned to sail. First, he worked as a business agent traveling, okay, around England, Ireland, etc. Later, he became an educated man who read a lot. Then he had this idea of going to Asia through the Atlantic. He proposed this idea to many leaders, but they rejected this idea. And finally, it was accepted by the Spanish queen. And in the end, he uh, arrived at the Bahamas in 1492. Now, the three paragraphs we have seen about Christopher Columbus. One paragraph is talking about reaching South America, arriving at South America. One paragraph is talking about his early life. Remember the text about Ibn Battuta? His early life and the idea of traveling to Asia. The idea of traveling to Asia. Now we need to match each idea, each principal idea with the right paragraph. If you remember, let's have a look at the three paragraphs. So Christopher Columbus was born. He was born. Normally this is his, okay? His what? Is it his early life, reaching South America, or the idea of traveling? Of course, it's very good. It's his early life. Second paragraph, Columbus had a plan. He had a plan to sail across the Atlantic to reach Asia, okay? So here it's normally, it's what? Is it the rich in South America or the idea? Very good, it's number three. It's the idea of traveling to Asia and finally reaching the Bahamas or South America, okay? So as you see, there is a chronological order in this biography as well, his early life, the idea, and realizing the idea, although it was realized differently, okay? Now, this is the correction. Rich in South America is the last one. His early life is the first paragraph and the idea of traveling is paragraph number two. Okay, now I want you to write a biography of a famous traveler, okay? We can think, for example, of Costo, if you know Costo, okay? And share it with your friends and teacher when you go back to class. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.